Hello, welcome to my channel. Today's video is sponsored by Medify and it is on how to apply strategically with your UCAT score. And I have had some DMs about this because, you know, it is quite worrying. Like it's such a big exam, you spend so long revising for it. And then now you have the score and it's like, what do I do now? Whatever UCAT score you get, you can probably get into somewhere. It's really important to apply strategically with your score so that you can give yourself the best chance of an interview because after the interview, that is when you get to show your true self and, you know, show how great you are and how you'd be an amazing doctor, regardless of the questions that you had on your UCAT day. So when contextualizing your UCAT score, you should look at the deciles. Um, and obviously, you know, fifth decile means top 50th percent, ninth decile means top 90th percentile of all people taking UCAT. So average is usually the fifth decile so for 2021 the interim results so not like the final uh, decile the mean scale scores for the subtests so vr was 584 decision making 631 quantitative reasoning 685 abstract reasoning was 671 and then the deciles first decile was 2230 fifth decile was 2570 and ninth decile was 2920 which is crazy and then for the bands um only 16 percent got band one 40 percent got band two 32 percent got band three and 12 percent got band four it's always good to know that in mind so that you can think where you want to apply to get the best chance of having an interview so if you scored really, really badly in your UCAT and you feel like, you know, it just didn't go to plan, maybe something happened, there's always the BMAT exam, which you can do. You can also learn the BMAT on Medify's website, but there are also some medical schools that don't really use the UCAT as heavily as others. To confirm all of this information, the website that is really amazing for medical school applicants is whatdotheyknow.com. And it's basically a freedom of information website so if you email a university under freedom of information they like legally have to respond with all this like more confidential information so they'll literally send people like every single applicant's UCAT if they got in what like if they had any contextual factors and it w it's just so helpful to know that if you're under the cutoff so you don't waste an application to confirm all of this definitely check out the freedom of information because they are saving you from not getting an offer basically um, and comparing to previous years so say you got a generally lower UCAT score some universities that would still accept you shown to have accepted people with lower UCATs are Cardiff, Keel, Queen's University Belfast, Plymouth, Lincoln, Sunderland and Liverpool so if you scored a more average UCAT, like 4th decile, 6th decile, um, here are some medical schools that you could probably apply to. So those are UEA, like in Norwich, Hull York, Leicester, St George's, London, Southampton, Anglia Ruskin, Aston, Edge Hill and Kent and Medway Medical School. So some of those are newer medical schools and I think usually they have slightly lower UCAT requirements because you know there's less people that know about them so it's not as competitive in terms of the UCAT it might be in terms of like the interview instead or the personal statement so that is if you have a more average UCAT so if you've scored really well really highly in your UCAT some universities that will give you preferential ranking um, would be Bristol, Newcastle, Edinburgh, Barts, Nottingham, Sheffield. Some of these schools literally rank people from high UCAT to the lowest and then just allocate them. A big thing like if you score extremely exceptionally high um, you can be basically guaranteed in getting an interview. So that has just been some universities that will probably be most suited to people with different UCAT scores. When applying to medical schools obviously you know think about where you want to be for like five six years think about you know the vibe but also think about where do you want to get in where do you know that you probably will get in with your scores where we'll read your personal statement where we'll have you know different types of interviews so really do research really carefully all the places that you apply to 
and don't just think, oh, you know, I know that place, so I'm gonna apply there. As a HEA, I work in a really great hospital, and I remember when all the new foundation year doctors came in and they were like introducing themselves. One of them was like from Oxbridge and, you know, top of their class, etc., etc. And then the other one was from a really small, like new medical school. And they were literally like, wow, how are we in the same place? But it's true, like, when you're being ranked as a doctor, you are ranked compared to your school deciles. So if you score first in one university compared to first in like Cambridge, they don't care that you went to Cambridge. And then the other half of your scoring is the SJT test. So in the final year of medical school, you'll be doing a situational judgment test again, which is different, but that is, you know, that's a big factor. So. Overall, where you go to medical school won't really impact you negatively. You'll end up enjoying wherever you go and probably having a lot of camaraderie and thinking that your medical school is the best one. I hope this has been really helpful and even though it is a bit daunting researching all of this and, you know, thinking, oh, like, am I above the cutoff, am I below the cutoff or are they, like, more holistic and they're not, like, just using the cutoff. But definitely use the freedom of information, email people, call admissions tutors, call people email people and just make sure that you're not being held back by anything in your application so i hope this has helped and that you've been able to use medify to get a good ucat score if not you can use medify to try the bmat and you can just get into medical school whatever happens so i hope this has really been helpful so thanks for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye